Thanks for the support as a channel member, Ollie Collins. Oh, Mrs. Wearmouth, it's happening. Four games to go. We're six points clear at the top of the league. We play third place Burnley today. We can have this wrapped up. We can have this wrapped up before my current cup of coffee gets cold. Ooh. I'm sorry I didn't make you one too. I, I'm busy trying to win the league here. I'll do it now before we get started. Hello and welcome to part 90 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you, at least. We might do a... If we don't get it wrapped up, I think we're just going to keep going until we're either promoted, champions, or massive bottle jobs. So, Burnley, Sheffield, Wednesday, Millwall and Derby are the remaining games this season. We might end up doing all four of them if we have to, but we're going to start things off against Burnley and we can go a long way towards wrapping things up here. We are away from home against them, but they're the team... Down in third place, we have a better goal difference than them and a six-point advantage. If we beat them, we'll be nine points clear with three games to go and a better goal difference. And then we'd just need a draw against Sheffield Wednesday to rubber stamp things. Get, winning the title itself and getting ahead of Birmingham might take a, a match or two longer, depending on how their results go. But we're going to try and get things done. Since you were last with me, um, th as you can imagine, looking at the league table, things have been going Swimmingly, Roberto Costabile is scoring goals for fun. He had an excellent end to the season last year. He's having an excellent end to the season again this year. A hat-trick there, one there, two... No, another hat-trick there. Um, he got some in there, one in there, one there. Um, Costabile is scoring the goals that are going to fire us to the Premier League. Now valued at five and a half million pounds. A three-star current ability player, 14 goals from 28 games, doesn't really tell the whole story because it's 14 goals from 18 starts in this run that's seen him in the team for for this spell of games here where it took him a little bit of a little bit of time to find his feet in the system uh, but for the last six games he has been in ridiculous form and uh, hopefully continues in that vein today um so past Kev's not picked him I mean I'm loath to criticise past Kev. But he's made a made a fool of himself here. Ola Richards can only play 75 minutes and isn't fully fit. Renan can just... I mean, past Kev. Let me know what your thought process was. I'm, I mean, I imagine he probably had one. I've probably just made a terrible error there. But can I, let me know in the comments. Can anybody see a reason why we wouldn't be starting Costa Bile? I, I certainly can't see one. So this is going to be the team for the game against Burnley. We're going with Green in goal, a back four of McCartan, Lay, Bart and Curry, Collier and Akani in midfield, Renan, Hodgkinson and Onyango supporting Costa Bile up front. What was he thinking? I mean, like I say, there must be some logic that I'm not seeing. Late night logic, because as you know, after I record these matches, I can play the in-betweeny bits at all sorts of hours. Who knows? I mean, I was playing this quite late last night, getting getting ready to be able to play these games this morning for the episode. So it could just be a late night oversight from a sleepy moron, or there could have been a piece of tactical genius going on that I'm not fully privy to. But either way, Costa Bile's got six goals. Was it six, six or seven goals in his last six games? He starts and everyone else can fit around him because he's the man in form. Um, it's nil-nil after half an hour and Burnley have got the corner. It's going to be an in-swinger and Collier heads it clear. Collier, who is now firmly established as our deep-lying playmaker in central midfield, as several of you said he would be. It, I mean, it didn't take me long to figure it out for myself and slot him in there. He's very, very good in that role and I think he's going to be a member, a starting member of that midfield for many, many years to come. He is, to, he is starting to look like a very good signing. The question is, who's going to be his midfield partner? And a lot depends on how well Grucock's getting on on his loan. Hodgkinson's in here. And Kieran Hodgkinson with the little through ball from Costa Bile. Hodgkinson has his 18th goal of the season. His 50th goal in nearly 10 years playing for home. Can't you tell we've shifted him into a more attacking role this year. Collier headed forward to Onyango. Onyango playing it into Costa Bile. Lovely little through ball and a very tidy finish from Hodgkinson. It's 1-0 after 33 minutes and... 
It's happening, boys and girls. Hodgkinson playing it across to Costa Bile, who couldn't quite get there. And but Curry gives it to Barr, and we keep we, we retain possession. On Yango with a flick on that he's gonna have to chase himself because there's nobody further ahead of him. And um, but he's continuing to chase, putting some pressure on the goalkeeper there. And the keeper once again makes a mistake. This time the kick ends up with Lay. And now it's Hodgkinson, who I mean, there's a last ditch tackle in there from the Burnley defender that takes the ball off the toe of Collier, who I think was shaping up to hit it. Uh, but it's with Hodgkinson again, goes past his man, plays it back to Collier, who gives it out to Curry on the right hand side. Nathan Curry back to Collier again. Collier with the cross. Renan's in space and Renan scores a 13th goal of the season for him. It's 2 0. It's two goals in three minutes for home. And we have got goal scorers all over this pitch now. We've just been looking at Costa Bile, but Hod Hodgkinson and Renan are both well into double figures for the season as well. And that is, I mean, albeit good football from us, their goalkeeper is going to be very disappointed that Renan, of all people, all five foot six of him, Renan with the header has beaten him by heading it straight at him and him just letting it go past him. It's some very poor goalkeeping from the Burnley goalkeeper. We'll take it. We're here for the poor goalkeeping. Hodgkinson with a crunching tackle in midfield as Burnley try and get themselves back into this game after what has been a very stressful few minutes for them. And Green misses the cross as it comes in and they are back in it. This has been... I mean, if you went to get a pie on the half-hour mark and there was a bit of a queue, you've missed all the action in this game. Only six minutes has taken it from 0-0 to 2-1. And Burnley are not ready to uh, give up on their hopes of a return to the Premier League just yet. But we are still ahead in the game. I'm not sure what's going on in the Birmingham game. We do need to keep half an eye on what's going on there because if we do hold on to this scoreline and Birmingham lose, we are as good as promoted and as good as champions um, immediately, which would be which would be lovely, really, in the interest of keeping the episode to a reasonable length. Um, Jack Green making the save as Burnley are in again now. We do need to be a little bit wary because that's a couple of times now that Burnley have been in and there is the equaliser. It, it felt like it was coming. I was just saying how we had to be careful because they were coming at us. And despite taking that two-goal lead, Burnley have now pinned us back. It's 2-2 just before half time and we've got to do it all again in the second half and Kieran Hodgkinson doesn't look like he's going to be part of that second half because he appears to be a broken man Hodgkinson is going to have to come off we're going to bring on Adam Blamplate to play in there as the attacking midfielder that's the only change for now um I would very much like to see the Birmingham score um I assume they're losing or not they are losing they're losing away against Cardiff so this becomes even more massive. I mean, a draw, if Birmingham will lose and we draw, we've still got a six-point advantage over Burnley, seven points over Birmingham. But with Birmingham losing, a win here suddenly becomes absolutely enormous. But Burnley are also thinking the same thing. If they can pick up the win, there's two back heels in, the fine, in our third of the pitch there. I'm not happy. I'm going to sack both of those players. I mean, it might have led to a goal. It didn't, but... There's a time and a place for fancy little back heels. This is neither. Um, right, we need to make some changes. We've got some very tired legs on this pitch. We are in a position where we can bring Ola Richards on as we didn't uh, didn't use him from the start. So Richards can come on for Renan. That's a nice substitution to be able to make. Um, and then for the final change, it's got to be Akani or Onyango who come off. Um, Akani was one of the back heel morons, but... Taking off on it depends. Are we trying to are we trying to hold if we're trying to hold on to this scoreline? Ali Basic comes on for Akani to strengthen the midfield. If we're trying to go for it, Fulton on for Onyango gives us more pace and direct. We're trying to win it. Who am I kidding? Fulton comes on for Onyango. We've had a change in the attack and we are going for it. Let's uh Let's drop a little bit of encouragement here. Hopefully we don't live to regret it. I know a lot of you would be very much of the, Kev, avoid defeat first and then see if you can grab a win. I'm all about, I'm tempted to go attacking here. Costa Bile does brilliantly. Fulton's in space. If he can find him, it's like he's got blinkers on. He doesn't realise Mackenzie Fulton's there. It comes to McCartan and now Collier in space on the edge of the area. Plays it across to Nathan Curry, who has time and space as well. Back to Collier. Someone needs to get this ball into the pennant area. That's beautiful play from Collier to keep hold of the ball, but the pass is a little overhit. And now Burnley have got an opportunity for a counter-attack again. And um, Lay, is that Lay? Has been beaten for pace there. Uh, but luckily, Jack Green is equal to it after 
a little bit of a, a little bit of dis- a little bit of disappointment from Green in that first half with the goals that he was conceding. Corner comes in, and this time it is cleared. And Blamplate, if he can get there first, it's going to be two on two. It's Blamplate and Costa Pile against the two Burnley defenders. If he can beat his man, which he can't, and it's so frustrating, Hodgkinson would have done. He's back to Collier again, who's sat in this little pocket of space, pulling all of the strings. Collier out to McCartan, but the move ends. Birmingham still losing in their game, which is very, very important for us. Richards now, who should have fresh legs, despite carrying a little bit of a knock into the game. Uh, Nathan Curry plays it forward to Fulton. We need a performance from Mackenzie Fulton here. He plays it across to Costa Pile. He nods it down to Blamplate, who shoots from range and it goes just over. What a goal that would have been, but he just couldn't keep it down. Again, you've got to wonder, does, does Hodgkinson score there? Almost certainly. Uh, right, McCartan playing it forward to Richards. Just turn and run or give the ball away, whichever you prefer. Costa Bile, who uh, hasn't scored yet. So it's a beautiful pass through to Fulton, though. He just couldn't get past his man. Mackenzie Fulton is a frustration. I think he might be done. I think he's 20, 21 now. He's had his opportunities. He's not taken them. And we've gone behind in the game. And I guess it keeps things interesting going into the final few games. I wasn't really up for interesting though. I wanted to have things wrapped up today. We've got to go. We've got to go attack him. We've got to at least try. I mean, <laughs> we've got to try and win the game or get back into the game. We need a goal. A goal is now crucial. Uh, Fulton, terrible pass, but Akani eventually gets a hold of it and it's with McCartan on this left hand side. We've not really looked like scoring since we got our second goal. Since that little three minutes of madness in the first half, Curry bursts into the air, crosses to Costa Pile. Oh, it's disallowed. Oh, my word, that must have been close. That didn't look offside as it was coming across. Curry. Oh, it's so close. He is just off. But my word, was that close. Right, five minutes to go. We need an equaliser. Bar forward to Collier. Plays it out to Richard, who's been very quiet since coming on. Now would be a time to do exactly that, but he couldn't get the... He beat his man well, got the cross in, but couldn't find Costa Bile, who's lurking in the middle, and drew a goal. He's not scored yet today. The form he's been in, maybe past Kev was right. Maybe because this wasn't the game for Costa Bile. Green makes the save this time. Bar scratches it clear, and as we go into these final few games, we're still six points clear of Birmingham, because thankfully it looks like they've lost as we have. So six points clear of third place with three games to go. We're still looking good for promotion, but Burnley have very much inserted themselves into the title mix with that victory there. We're three points ahead of them, six ahead of Birmingham. <sighs> well, thankfully, we have everybody fully fit for the Sheffield Wednesday game, so no tired boys resting down on the bench. So Harrison Davies can come back into the team at centre-back. Francis comes back in at left back. Ali Basic's going to play alongside Akani in central midfield. Richards can start on the left with Renan on the right. And then we're going, as before, with Costa Bile and Hodgkinson as our main attacking threat. Let's let's get into this and let's let's grab a win. I mean, we are still in pole position in this running. Burnley are going to be feeling good off the back of beating us. But ultimately, if we win our final three games, we win the league. If we win one of them, we, I, th I think one more win will be enough to get promoted. It has Harrison Davies just got the ball across the line there. I don't know. That, I mean, it's been disallowed for offside. I would ask whether from the initial header, Davies has scored there. Do we get to have another little look at it? It comes over. Davies with the header. Um, yes, there's an offside in there, but does it, does it really count if Davies scores? Which maybe he didn't. Uh, Birmingham are ahead in their game, I think, because they've just added some points on. Uh, which is not ideal. We'd like them to just completely bottle all of this, but apparently they're not up for it, which seems unfair. Um, Richards across to Akani and now back to Ali Basic again. Um, Ali Basic looking for options ahead of him, sprays it out to Renan. It's um, It doesn't get there, and Sheffield Wednesday have got in behind now because Curry had also pushed on forward. Um, Barr's been turned relatively comfortably there, but thankfully the shot is wide and we, uh, we survive. There's confirmation of Birmingham's goal away against Fulham, which does certainly keep things interesting at the top. Burnley are away against Brentford as well. So all three of us away from home today, uh, but we definitely, oh, Birmingham are 3-0 up. They are, 
they are definitely making up for... I think they played Cardiff in their last game. They're definitely making up for what went on there. Burnley have just gone ahead in their game as well. I noticed on the scores there. So we really need to do the same. And we've hit the crossbar now. I think that's Renan getting on the end of a, getting on the end of a free kick with a header again. He's so little, but apparently quite good in the air, as we learned in the last game with him scoring from a header. And Birmingham's second goal only just coming through on the in-game updates but we've already seen for there you go there's the third coming through as well and any second now we'll probably see Burnley's goal pop up down there as well we need a goal but it's Sheffield Wednesday who've got the corner just before half time it's headed clear by Ali Basic and Hodgkinson has got the opportunity for the break here he's got Costa Bile ahead of him and if he can get past this man he can hopefully find him he does find Costa Bile but the header he can't keep it down he had two men on him and just couldn't keep the header down nil nil at half time we need to win this game because Burnley and Birmingham are both winning theirs. This is, I can't bottle this from here. We've been in this league for too long. This is the strongest position we've ever been in. We're not going to get as many points as we did that year. We finished third on 99 points. But all the same, we're top of the table with two games to go. We can't mess it up from here. Richards is in. Davis is in. Oh, my word. That might be the moment he earns his knighthood. An eighth goal of the season for Harrison Davies. And he is scoring some crucial, crucial goals for us this season. Nathan Curry with the cross. Richards with the effort. It falls to Harrison Davies. He's not in there winning headers. He's in there just being a poacher. Harrison Davies wants to play in the Premier League. It's Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday nil, home one, and it's time to make some changes. Renan is tired and not playing well. Ali Basic, tired and not playing well. Costa Bile, tired and not playing well, but I'm not. There's not a chance I'm bringing Fulton on again. A bland plate can come on and Hodgkinson. Can go up front and we'll make those three changes. Right, let's not mess up. Davies' head's clear. And uh, oh my word, Harrison Davies, what a man. 11th season at the club for him this year. And he is trying to spearhead the charge towards the Premier League. He's been the best player in the team on average rating all year. There have been times when he's been the best player in the Championship. He kind of drifts in and out of that average rating thing. I don't think he's in the top three at the moment. He is having a season and he's been beaten. I mean, I don't think it is Davies who was up against a former, I don't I don't think in this save, but there have been saves where we've signed to Sean Bernard. Uh, possibly we had him at Kettering in non to Legend earlier in the year. And I think we had him in the home team on YouTube, on Twitch last year. And now all of a sudden, we need a hero again. We're demanding more. A points gap at the top as things stand is not a lot of fun for Kev. We are doing our very best to bottle this. We're in such a strong position at the start of this episode and we're throwing it all away. It looks like this is going to end 1-1. Tell me we've got a couple of home games to end the season because away from home here, we are struggling. Unlucky boys, it just wasn't our day. We've had team meetings before the last two matches. But I've taken the pressure off. It might be time to put the pressure back on again because we are... Troubling. We are a troubling team. Our final two games are both at home, Millwall and Derby. Ultimately, not a lot has changed other than the fact our points advantage has disappeared. If we win them both, we're champions. If we win one of them, we're promoted. Let's keep going. I promised we'd keep going. We keep going. Well, boys and girls, today there is the opportunity for us to crown a new home legend. Slam dunk who is now the manager of Millwall. He left us last summer to go and become manager of Luton. Um, Luton have had an incredible season in League Two. He's basically secured himself a promotion already. And because of that, got the Millwall job after less than a year as a football manager. Millwall, who we play today and have nothing to play for. Can I point out, Slam Dunk is already on the club icons list. Can I point out, Slam Dunk is the only manager in the game I have a very close relationship with. Slam Dunk, please just roll over and let us beat you. We want to go to the Premier League. This is the team we're going to put out there to try and do it. Um, it's pretty much the same team as the last game. The one change is I've, I'm, I'm resting, resting Costa Bile, who's been really poor in both of those two games that you've seen today. So Costa Bile 
comes out of the side. Maybe past Kev was onto something after all. We're going with Ali Basic up front as a pressing forward. She's done a few times this year and looks pretty useful when doing. It means Collier can come back into the midfield as well. Otherwise, I'd have been tempted to put Renan up there, but I'd rather get Collier back in. I really like the way Collier pulls the strings in midfield for us. We, we've got a, a slam dunk. Slam dunk. Come on. We go back such a long way. You were here at the very beginning. You were you were here for a lot of what's got us to this point. You've sat, you've suffered through several years of pain in the championship as we've struggled to get out of this league. You know what this means to everyone involved. Harrison Davies was the best man at your wedding, probably. I mean, they've they've, they've, they've been mates for a long time. But still, just slam dunk, please. No, not like this. We can't. Jack. Oh, Jack Green. What a man. What a man. Jack Green making the save. The attack continues, but Barr is there to head clear. Uh, but once again, it only goes as far as a Millwall player, and they're going to keep the attack rolling forward again. The other thing, of course, is we do need to keep, oh, for goodness sake, Collier, who I've given a big confidence. I've, I've shown a lot of confidence in by bringing him into the team for this big game. He's just given away a penalty, and it's all on Jack Green again. Show us why we shouldn't re-sign Alex Williams. Jack Green makes the save from the penalty. We were worried that our lack of Williams this year would cost us, but I tell you what, Jack Green is a goalkeeper. Corner comes in. Not even a slam dunk corner. What a waste. And Harrison Davies heads clear, but we are under a huge amount of pressure here from Millwall. A Millwall side who have nothing to play for other than slam dunk's pride. He's a hero here at home. And he's trying to turn himself into a villain. They've got a corner now. This one is lining up to be a slam dunk corner. Uh, but Barr is there to head clear. And it goes as far as Ali Basic, who can turn and run. If he can get past red card, anybody? Through one goal. Last man. None of that's true. But I'm clutching at straws a little bit. Right. Burnley are away against Peterborough. So Peterborough have the opportunity to do us a favour as well. Birmingham at home against Ipswich. You would expect both of them to win both of those games. Ipswich are down in mid-table. Posh are already relegated, I think. So we've got to win. It is still in our hands. Even after this rubbish run of two games we've had in this episode so far, it is still in our hands. Burnley have just gone ahead against Peterborough, meaning a goal for us is crucial as we approach half-time. Ali Bassic knocks down to Renan! And Renan is there with his 14th goal of the season to put us 1-0 up on 42 minutes. Home one. Millwall nil. It puts us back to the top of the league. And now all eyes on Birmingham because this could be enough, as things stand, to secure promotion at the very least. We'd have to go into the final day to win the title. But Birmingham are not yet winning in their game. So I think that's a five-point gap with a game to go as things stand. So this would be enough for promotion. Birmingham still drawing 0-0 at home to Ipswich. It would be a six-point gap, in fact, if things end as they are. Um, so both us and Burnley getting promoted today unless Birmingham sort their lives out in their game against Ipswich. I haven't even looked how our, goal, how our goal difference compares to Birmingham's. It could be as good as done, even if Birmingham win, but it does rely on us winning this match. So we do need to not let Millwall back in. They are camped out on the edge of our area again, and Jack Green has just made another phenomenal save. What a performance from Jack Green today. He's another one who is desperate for us to be in the Premier League. He knows that just before this game, I was looking at Alex, Alex Williams again, actually asked his agent how much it would be to bring him back in. As I start to think for next year, we could re-sign Alex Williams for £10 million. That's less than we sold him for. Plus there's a 20% sell-on back to us. So I'm not sure if that's on profit or sale price, but we could potentially get Williams back for £8 million a year after we sold him for fifteen, if we get promoted. But Jack Green, he's not having any of it. Forget signing Williams, Kev. I'm Jack Green, is what he says, but in a Scottish accent because he's Scottish. Right, Onyango is coming on for Richards, who has been poor again today. We're going to take off Collier. Al Ali Basic's going to drop back into the midfield. We're going to bring on Costa Bile up front. And then for the final change, we're going to get Alec Lay on in midfield just to give us a little bit of midfield oomph in there. He's going to come in as a ball-winning midfielder. Um, Ali Basic can move across to be the Mazala and hopefully Lay can just be in there crunching into Millwall players in midfield for the rest of the afternoon. It's still 1-0, 15 minutes to go. Ipswich are ahead against Birmingham. It is happening, boys and girls. 
Curry with the corner. Falls to Davis. Ali Basic has got the ball in the back of the net. I think it's been disallowed. It hasn't. It's been given. It was such a subdued celebration from our players. I thought it hadn't been given, but it has. It's 2-0. It's from a corner, not a slam dunk corner, which ruins some of the poetry a little bit. Um, but there's lots of kerfuffle there on the line and it ends up being recorded as an own goal. But the big headline is Ipswich 1-0 up away against Birmingham. Burnley's still winning their game, but it looks like we are going to be a Premier League team next year and then it'll just be into that final game to see if we're champions or not. Look at Hodgkinson putting a spurt of pace on in the 86th minute after a long season. He wants it. He's been here a long time. Davies wants it. Ali Basic forward to Costa Bile, gets his head down and runs. And there's Ali Basic again. He's been everywhere today. Ali Basic from range. And it's over. It's uh, pushed over by the Millwall goalkeeper. We've got another corner. Curry coming across to take again. Nathan Curry with the corner. Two on Yango. And, I mean, it wasn't the man to aim for at the corner, really. We should be aiming for that near post where the big boys lurk. Um, but it goes far post. And on Yango, not really getting anything on it. But it doesn't matter because we're in the Premier League. We are, we're in the Premier, we're in, well, slam dunk. Thank you, slam dunk. Can we get a thank you, slam dunk down in the comments section? Can you just imagine the chant ringing around the home of football after that game? Thank you, slam dunk. Oh, the man should go on the legends list immediately. We're in the Premier League. We've been given £36 million to spend. Mrs. Wearmouth, you spoil us. We've doubled our wage budget as well. And it's all I can do to not go and buy Alex Williams and Nathan Curry immediately because we could get the pair of them for half of that budget. I'm, doing, I'm probably going to do it anyway. Bring them both home. Oh, my word. We are Premier League. And now we just need to find out if we're going up as champions, what a performance from Jack Green. Here's me talking about bringing in Alex Williams. Five saves, an 8.5 rating. Jack Green is giving it everything to not get himself replaced. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough because Williams is Williams is still holding that label of the next Peter Shilton, I think. And we're going into the Premier League. We need the best goalkeeper we can get. And I think that's going to be Alex Williams if he wants to come home. If not, I think I'm happy to go with Green. Let's go and win the league. It's happening. I'm very pleased to announce that plans are afoot for the club to build a new stadium. It's anticipated it will be finished by June 2032, so next summer. So we're probably going to have a year of ground sharing in the Premier League. A capacity of around 13,000. I mean, it's more than double what we've got now. It's not exactly Champions League size, is it? But... Boys and girls, we're getting a new home of football. The derby match is going to be on the telly. We're offering some Premier League standard contracts out to some of our heroes and fingers crossed. And I know I shouldn't do it, but the excitement's getting the best of me. Fingers crossed before the derby game, we'll have confirmed the signings of Alex Williams and Nathan Curry. Alex Williams comes home for the Premier League. He only had one year away. He can just compete with Jack Green. I'm not saying Williams is coming in to be nailed on starter. We'll see how they get on. We're going to have two very good goalkeepers. The two best goalkeepers in the Championship are both going to be home players next year. But Alex Williams is coming home and fingers crossed, we confirm the Nathan Curry transfer as well. They are both home, boys and girls. Now let's go and win the league. So our team for what should be, hopefully will be, our final ever game in the championship. And we're bringing Alec Lay into midfield just to add that crunch in there that we were talking about in the previous game. And um, he can play alongside Collier. That might actually be the midfield for next year. Lay as a ball-winning midfielder on defend with Collier alongside him as a, a playmaker on support, allowing him to get just that little bit further forward. We have given out some of these new contracts that we were talking about. Uh, Jack Green hasn't signed his yet, but he's been offered a new one. Uh, Joe Barr has got a new £19,500 a week contract. Harrison Davies now earning twenty-five grand a week. That's a £7 million five-year contract for a man who started with us in the pitching in seven league Division One Central and never left. You know what? The time has come. Sir Harrison Davies. 
And I don't think anyone can possibly argue with that. Um, who else got it? Renan has signed a new contract, um, £36,500 on a £10 million contract for Renan to keep him at the club long term. Now a goal-scoring Northern Ireland international, as you can see. Um, two goals from four caps. Kieran Hodgkinson hasn't yet signed his, but he's got a new contract on the way as well, as has Ali Basic, but I don't think he's signed his yet. There's a few of these who have got new contracts, and I imagine over the course of the summer, most of them will sign new deals. They'll sign their their long-term Premier League contracts. It's going to be a very different summer to what we'd normally have going into the Premier League. We're obviously going to try and bring in as many wonder kids as we can, but we can't go out and sign a load of established Premier League players or real top-tier players. We're still going to have a mega low reputation. So we are going to be going with a lot of these players in the Premier League, which is, I guess, it's the nature of the save. And we've just got to hope that they're good enough. A few people have been saying in the comments recently, spending five years in the championship might just end up being the best thing that possibly could have happened for the save and for this club, because we are now going into the Premier League with in the best shape we possibly could. We've got Harrison Davies, Kieran Hodgkins and Nathan Curry all entering the prime of their careers and, and real top level players. Uh, we've got fantastic off field facilities. We've got, all of these younger players who are starting to develop and come through. We've got a very solid squad that should be good enough to survive. And we're in a very, very strong position. And Ola Richards is in and really should be providing a finish there. Burnley are at home against Millwall. Oh my word, Slam Dunk might be getting himself a knighthood here. Letting us win to get promoted. If Millwall beat Burnley, you're going to get two knighthoods in one episode and it's going to be Sir Slam Dunk as manager of Millwall. I love the fact that Slam Dunk is so actively involved in the promotion to the Premier League. So, I mean, he hasn't been a player for us for nine years. He had that time he came back on loan and wasn't any good. But realistically, it's been so long since Slam Dunk has been involved in any way. And he's so involved in this episode. And it's phenomenal. Come on, Slam Dunk. Come on home. Come on, Sir Harrison Davies. Nathan Curry, now a permanent home player for the first time in nine years, I think. And um, Richards with the cross for Ali Basic, and it's just wide. Oh, he could have made himself an all-time hero there. I'm handing out knighthoods like toffees at the moment. He could have had one. He wouldn't have got one. He could have had one there. That He wouldn't have got one there, though. Uh, right, Barr plays it across to Davies, and now Collier back to lay. This is some nice, patient build-up play that hopefully is going to end in a goal. Renan comes deep, plays it back to lay again. Now Collier misses out, but Davies is there just to, just to keep hold of the ball. Harrison Davies, that's what he does. Look at him coming forward. He's becoming a libero. Collier playing it across to Renan. If he can just beat his man, in fact, he doesn't. He gives it to Curry. Curry plays it across to Collier again. More lovely, patient football. Collier looking to pick his spot. Tries to slot it through to Richards, but Renan is in. And Renan can't get it towards goal either. My word, we are getting close to this breakthrough. It's Curry with the corner. Nathan Curry looking for Davies. Can't find him, but Lay is there. Probably should be in the area for these corners, but because he's playing in midfield... The tactic is set up for the midfielder to lurk on the edge of the area and he was actually quite useful out there and even more useful coming in there to get the tackle in and Lay is there again for the clearance. It doesn't actually go very far but Hodgkinson is in with a tackle and now Renan with the break but can't get through. It's still nil-nil in the Burnley-Millwall game. Come on, slam dunk. Uh, Millwall have had a player go off injured. 20 minutes to go here and we need a goal. Collier is going to come off. Um, we're going to bring we're going to bring a Carney on for Collier, and we're going to get him pushing forward a little bit more. We're going to bring Costa Bile on for Ali Basic, and we're going to bring Andrew McCartan on for Francis, who's not had a very good game at left back. And you know what? We want to win the league. We're going attacking. Come on, boys! We just need one big push. It's McCartan looking for the slam dunk corner, and it is Sir Harrison. Davies with his ninth goal of the season and that I've got goosebumps this is absurd Sir Harrison Davies has just scored the goal that could well make us champions of the football league my you couldn't write this oh I'm I'm I'm, I'm feeling a little emotional it's a video game Sir Harrison Davies, what a story, what a career, what a man. Three minutes to go 
it's still 1-0. Let's not mess up. We should probably go back to our positive mentality rather than continuing to attack. Renan got, has got the break on here and Renan trying to slot it through to Costa Bile. He can't. It's back with Renan. Falls to Hodgkinson again. He plays Ola Richards in. Across to Costa Bile. That rubber stamps it. It's 2-0 now with two minutes left. Home of the champions. And... It's the Harrison Davies story. That's what you've had today. Could it be the tale of two nights, though? We need to see what's going on in the Millwall game because I am so tempted to to go there and sort Slam Dunk out as well. Who's done us? Who's done us a solid in today's episode? Oh, I thought they had gone ahead. It's still nil nil in the Millwall game. Uh, McCartan playing it forward to Costa Bile. Costa Bile back to McCartan again. Another one of our youth academy players who's come through and made such an impact, and Davies is there again. He is just first to everything. Hodgkinson trying to score a wonder goal to rubber stamp everything. Lay showing why he should be in the midfield next year with another tackle, and it's all the way back to Green, and Green lumps it forward to Costa Bile, a nod down to Richards, and then Renan is in. Renan grabs the third. There's your cartwheel. We are champions, everybody. Home three, Derby nil. I love the way this story has turned out. I wouldn't, looking back, I'm glad we didn't go up all those times we got heartbreak because this season, this episode couldn't have been more perfect. And Home FC have won the championship and Sir Harrison Davies, the man who grabbed the first goal today, is taking a step up to pick up the trophy. This is... This is your moment, boys and girls. The save could end here. This is enough. Where on earth do we go from here? Harrison Davies and we are the champions. And can Jack Green step into the shoes of Captain Cartwheel and give us a, give us a little flip? We Remember when we used to get these all the time? It's been a long time since we've had this animation. And Jack Green, with the spirit of Captain Cartwheel, there he goes. Oh, the, the confetti is flowing. I've even got my pink suit on today, just like in-game Kev. We've only gone and done it, boys and girls. We are the champions. And tomorrow, we have to figure out how on earth we're going to stay in the Premier League because that is going to be... Quite a tall order. Um, did did I just need to check in to see if if Slam Dunk did his did his bit? Um, I need to see the scores. Right, let's just pat Sir Harrison Davies on the head. What a player! Home crowned champions. Um, I made a promise to Slam Dunk. Did he manage to? Uh, no, they didn't win. No knighthood for Slam Dunk yet. I'm sure me and Slam Dunk are going to meet again. The trajectory his career is on. But we go into tomorrow's transfer special. Even after those silly transfers you probably don't agree with, we've still got £28 million to spend. And that's with Curry and Williams already coming in. I don't know. I don't see how we spend £28 million on players 18 and under. But goodness me, am I going to give it a good go tomorrow? If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.